Hi, good day all, and today we have another set of beautiful problems, and I hope if we recall from the previous book video, and we solve something related to this. So here we are required to simplify the following expressions, and which involve with powers of terms. So it's involved in two cases, the powers and as well as the, the logarithms. So if we consider the first problem given, the square, the square root of log root, log of the square root of the square root of root two multiplied by the square root of root two base root two plus log of the fourth root of root two and root two the base of root, root of the square root of square root of two. So we are given these problems to simplify them, to have a unique value for each of these problems given. And I guess this is very simple and straightforward. There are certain things we just have to take note of and put into consideration, but these problems are very easy. And I hope if you continue to watch my videos and you will learn a lot. So keep on because like normally I'll be posting videos in every five days. You see, so be ready to go into the channel, do your subscription, do your likes in all of the videos and try to do your comments, whatever thing you might comment and I will definitely take it into consideration we we'll move we have this first problem we are required to simplify so these are the values given we have this term we have this term so these two terms they are inside the square root we are in we are required to simplify it so if we take the first part we say the square root of we are given the square root of The square root of, let me just write it in this The square root of log root square root root 2 multiplied by another 2 square roots, and the base of the log is root 2, and added to another term which is given as log, the fourth root of root 2, 2 multiplied by the square root of 2, and root, the square root multiplied by another square root of 2. We have this problem, which is very simple and straightforward. We just have to use certain basic principles. Like, let's say, if we have the square root of A, and we have these two square roots, square root, square root of A, you have to know this square root, its significant value is half, it's a radicand. So if you have two square roots, you know, if we just like if you have two square roots, it means you are multiplying half times half. So this is good. You multiply the top, which is one times one is one, two times is four. So when you have two square roots, it simply means the index or the power or the degree or the exponent is one upon four. You see, when you have one square root, the power is 1 upon 2. When you have two square roots, the power is 1 upon 4. When you have three square roots, the power is 1 over 8. Just multiply 2 times 2 times 2, regardless. So since we have this value, this, it means A raised to the power. This first square root is half, multiplied by the second square root is also half. You see that? So in simple form, we have A raised to the power 1. We multiply the powers. 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 2 is 4. So this is how we have a raised to the power 1 upon 4. This is the fourth root, which you can also write as the fourth root of a. You see, so these are little things we need to take into consideration. If this one is captured, let's use another basic point we need to take note of. If we have root a divided by a, this is very simple. When you deal with indices, 
If the bases are the same, you carefully take one of those bases, and if you are dividing, you subtract their powers. Or if you are multiplying, you add their powers. You see? So in this case, since we are dividing, you are going to take one power, because the power of this A is half, divided by the power of this A is 1. Since we are dividing, always the power of the numerator minus the power of the denominator. So this is going to be A raised to the power, the power of the numerator, which is half, minus the power of the denominator, which is 1. So when you subtract, you end up having, any time you multiply half from a number, it's going to be negative of that value, which is negative half. You see? So in this case, these are certain points we need to very, very be careful. So let's have another basic principle which you might take note of. And these are hidden facts. You cannot see them in most of these common textbooks. Like, let's say if you have A raised to the power M times B raised to the power M. In this case, the bases are different but the powers are the same. So when the bases are different and the powers are the same, you maintain the power, this, you take it M. Since you are multiplying, you multiply them A, B. This is the basic principle. Example, let's say we have 2 raised to power 3 times 3 raised to power 3. Now, we use the logic of 2 times 3 because the powers are the same, we maintain 1. And since we are multiplying, we multiply 2 times 3. 2 times will give us 6, and 6 raised to the power 3 will give us 6 times 6 times 6, which is 2, 1, 6. But if you want to use the normal method, 2 raised to the power 3, it simply means we repeatedly multiply 2 by 3 times, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, times 2 raised to the power 3 again, we're going to be 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And 27 by 8 will give us 216. So it's going to be the same. So anytime we are multiplying two index, two terms, we are in their base are totally different. The powers are the same. Multiply the base and take one of the powers. This is it. So suppose the sign, the same issue, but the sign instead of multiplication we have a division sign, right? It's the same thing. You maintain A divided by B, and you maintain one of the powers. So I think these are some of the secrets we need to take note of. So with regards to this, we have this problem. We are required to simplify. We take the original square root. Are we getting that? So take log. This root 2, we can write as 2 raised to the power half because this radical or this sort or this square root means half. The base is going to be 2 raised to the power half. And we take again here, let's take note of we have a square root here. Let's take this value first. This value is going to be 2 raised to the power half. That this root 2 is 2 raised to the power half multiplied. We take again, you know. This 2 is having 2 square roots. I told you when you have 2 squares, it's going to be 1 upon 2 times 1 upon 2. So it's going to be 2 raised to the power 1 upon 2. 2 raised to the power 1 upon 2 times 1 upon 2. Mind you, we have this other square root which, 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 which covers the 2 terms. So we say all raised to the power half. You see the logic? Plus, and we take the other term which is log. Here again, this base, we have two square roots again. So like I said, it's going to be 2 raised to the power 1 upon 2 times 1 upon 2. Because when you have one square root, you only have one half. When you have two square roots, you have another half. So since we have these two square it's going to be half times half. Now, the number now, this is the fourth root. You know, the fourth root is going to be, if you have like fourth root of A, it's going to be A raised to the power 1 upon 4. Right? If you have the fifth root of b, it's so going to be b raised to the power 1 upon 5, and so on. You can take the tenth root of k, it's going to be k raised to the power 1 upon 10. So these points are very, very sensitive. We have to take them into consideration. Now, we consider this base, and we consider the number. You know, here, we have these two. Right? This root 2 is inside this value. So it's going to be these two. 
multiply by this root 2, which is 2 root per half. You know, there is a square root which is affecting both of them. You put this raised to power half. Time, don't forget, there is also another fourth root here, which is 1 upon 4. You see? This is how we carefully simplify these values. So, after having this, we also carefully maintain our square root log. We say, in this case, I think this is something, let's just maintain it. We exp I will explain that the next, next problem. Now, we have this value going to be 2 raised to power half times, this again, half times half going to give us 2 raised to power 1 upon 4. You see that? So, we we'll multiply it by half. We add up this plus, we take the other logarithm. And this again, you know, we are multiplying the same way. The, the power of these two is same as 1. So we say 1 plus half is going to give us 3 upon 2. Right? All raised to power. These powers, we have half and 1 fourth. So if we multiply half and 1 fourth, it's going to give us 1 over 8. This is because 1 times 1 is 1 and 2 times will give us 8. And we take this denominator. This again, half times half is going to give us 1 upon 4. This is how we take our time in simplifying that. I hope we are together. So in this case, we take the square root of the same number. We are this power is half. You know, we have to move it here. Since it's, it's reciprocal, it's half. It's going to be 2 log. So this half, we have moved it here. It's going to be the reciprocal. So here remains 2. And here, if we take 2, you know, we are multiplying. So we have to add their power. So we say half plus 1 for 2. Let's add it here. Half plus 1 over 4. So we say we take the LCM or the LCD, the least common denominator for these two denominators will be 4. 2 into 4 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 4 into 4 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. So 2 plus 1 is going to give us 3 upon 4. So these two values when combined, we have something like 3 upon 4. All raised to power half. Plus, yeah, we take again this other. This other number is also one fourth. The, 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 the reciprocal of this, when it comes, are going to become 4 log. We say 2 raised to power. If we multiply 3 upon 2 times 8, going to be 3 upon 2 times 8, going to give us 16. This is how we have this problem. So it's very simple and straightforward. I hope the point is going clearly. So since we arrived to this point, I think we can clear this stuff. Already gone. Yeah. So we take two the square root of we have these two. We maintain our log. You know, if we multiply three times, four times you're going to give us eight. And the base here is two. Yes, the log is left 2 raised to the power 3 times 4 times to go to give us 8 plus this again. We can we have 4 log, we maintain 2 raised to the power 3 upon 16. Base 2 here, the base here must be maintained. We have this value, I think this is what we have. So if we continue. This is a power, we have to move it to the coefficient of this log. It's going to be 2 times 3 upon 8 log 2 base 2 plus. We'll move this value, it's going to be 4 times 3 upon 16. We have something like log 2 base 2. Okay, I think we are right there. So if we continue, what else? Mind you, the log of a number to the same will be equals to 1. So this value will be 1. This value is going to be 1. So the result is going to be 2 into 8 is 4. So it's going to be 3 upon 4 plus because log 2 base 2 is 1. So this again log 2 base 2 is 1. So it means 4 into 16 is 4. Right? So we have 3 all over 4. So we have this, so the next point, since the denominators are the same, just add the numerators. So 3 plus 3 is going to give us 6 divided by 4. In simple form, so this is going to be 
2 can be divisible by both of these two values, 2 into 6 is 3, and 2 into 4 is 2. So this is the first value. We have the square root of 3 all over 2. So we have this value. So the next point we move, we move to try to solve the second part of the question says, The second part of the question says, I think this one is totally clear. The second part of the question says we are required to simplify the square root of log, the fourth root of root 3 all over half divided by the cube, the, the root 3, the, 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 the base there is root 3 plus log of the fourth root of the square root of 2 all over root 2 and the base of 4 root 2. The same thing. I hope this one is clear so you can carefully take your time and take the steps down so if we consider the second part b b is given as the fourth log of the fourth root the square root of root 2 also multiplied by another root another root <laughs> this, this question uh, log the fourth root of root 2 and also have another root 2 here and the base is root and root 2 so the b part is just wow why wow, i just copy root 2 sorry sorry just copy the a part okay and i need to clear the a part so let me just cross lines and so i will not take it down again so we have fourth root of root 3 divided by the fourth root of root 3 divided by root 3 but this root 3 is having a power which is raised to power 2 and the base given there is root 3 plus we also have the other term which is log the fourth root of and root of 2 all over root 2 and here the base is 4 root 2 I think this is it so we try to solve this other question so since we have this question we are required to solve this the square root of log of the fourth root of this is the fourth root of root 3 all is to power half divided by root 3 plus log of the fourth root of and the square root of 2 all over root 2 you see, so this again is also straightforward. We remove. Yeah, I think the only point we need to take note of here, let's say log of this root 3 is same as 3 raised to the power half. Because you know, I told you the value of this radical, this sort, or this square root is half, which is 3 raised to the power half. And we take again, we have this root 3. You know, root, there is root 3 here, there is root 3 here. So they are the same. We take one of them. And we we'll subtract the powers. The power of this is half minus the power of this is one, which is half minus one. All raised to the power there, it has a fourth root here, which is one upon four. You see, one upon four plus we consider this other value log. But you know, this is the fourth root, it's so going to be two raised to the power one upon four. This is the fourth root of these two, that's the base. And we'll take this again, but let's take note of two all over root two. What is the other way of writing 2, row, two all over root 2? Let's find it the radical. So if we multiply by its conjugates, so it's going to be root 2 divided by root 2. Why we do this? At least to remove this radical here in the, as, the numeral, as the denominator. So 2 times root 2 is going to give us 2 root 2. And root 2 times root 2 is going to give us 2. The end of the 2 comes root 2. So it remains root 2. So the whole of this value is going to be root 2 all raised to power it has the first power which is one upon two times it has the second power which is one upon four this is what we have i hope it is clear so if we move forward if we move forward we maintain our square root log you know 
if we move these values, this idea is half, so when it moves here, it's going to become 2 log, and this only remains 3. And here it's going to be, or we can just leave it root 3, root 3. Yeah, I think that will be simple. This half, that will be simple. Let's just leave it root 3. So this is going to be the log of root 3. And this half minus 1 is minus half, so you're going to root 3. Always to power minus half times one fourth is going to be minus one upon eight plus we we'll take again because we through to the same we can easily cancel it. Yeah, instead of we involve more steps, let's use this method. This again, you know this four is the power, so is the reciprocal. If we move it here, it's become four log, and this two over four is just going to remain as two because this one fourth has been moved when it comes here, it becomes we take the reciprocal of this because the reciprocal of 1 upon 4 this 4 will move up going to be only 4 so it's going to be 4 and this again we take the we multiply these values this root is given into 2 root per half times you know half, 1 times 1 is 1 and 2 times 4 is going to give us 8 you see so we have you know this is the power if we move it we move it back we're going to be minus 1 upon 8 log of log of here what remains is only root 3 divided by root 3 plus yeah we have 4 log base 2 and if we multiply this 1 times 1 is 1 and 2 times 8 is 16 so we have this value i think this is it help is it seen yeah 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 i think it's clear so if we further simplify this value we maintain this square root right so we say negative one upon eight times you know log three base three is one which is one plus we take again four times you know this power this one upon six if we move it to the coefficient of this we're going to be four times one over 16 and we have something like log two base two and the square root covers <laughs> So if we continue, the square root of minus 1 times 8 is going to be minus 1 upon 8 plus 4 into 16 is 4, so it's going to be 1 upon 4, and log 2 base is going to be 1. So this is just the result. So if we further, here we can simply make it understandable. The LCD, the LCD or the LCM between 8 and 4. So the least denominator for these two denominators is 8. So 8 into 8 is 1, 1 times minus 8 is minus 1. Plus 4 into 8 is 2 times, 2 times 1 is 2. So we end up having minus 1 plus is 1 all over 8. Yeah. So if we continue, this can also be written as root 1 divided by root 8, which is root 1 is 1, and square root of root 8 is the same as 4 times 2. You see that? So which can be seen as 1, root 4 is 2, and this will remain as root 2. So this is the final answer for this b part simple and straightforward you just have to take your time and you go through the steps one by one you can have your booklet and you try to copy the steps one by one and i believe with the explanation it will be somehow understandable now the b part is done we move to the c part right i hope you can take it down so if we take the c part the c part again says c problem c we have log of five ways to the one upon five and its base is square root of root three and there is a square root multiplied by this log which is log five into root five and the base is one upon five plus log of 5 root 5 yeah and the base of that is the fourth root of 2 so this is it so this is the c part so if we solve the c part again which is also simple and straightforward so i think we have two terms here this log of this term multiplied by this square root of this other term but this square root is having another two terms inside the bracket, inside the square root. We have this log of 5 root 5 
base of one fifth plus log of five root five base of fourth root of two. So we can work this separately and also work the square root separately. But this is simple and straightforward. We take log, you know, if you have one upon two in index form, this can be written as two raised power minus one. If you have one upon a in index, we're going to be a one a raised power minus one. If you have one upon three in index, we're going to be three raised power minus one. So if we have this one one upon five, it's going to be five raised power minus one, and we have our keep root here, which is root three. Now, uh, which is root five. I think this is root five. Yeah, root five. Sorry. I consider this one entire, this is root 5. So this root 5 again is going to be 5 raised to the power half. So we have this. So 1 upon 5 can be written as 5 raised to the power minus 1. And this root 5 is going to be 5 raised to the power half. We we'll multiply it by the square root given. And when we consider the square root, which we have as, you know, we are multiplying 5 times this 5 is 5 times this root 5, same as 5 raised to the power half. You see that, and this one upon 5 is going to be 5 raised to the power minus 1 plus the same thing again. We take log of this four root, this fourth root is the same as 2 raised to the power 1 upon 4, and this number is going to be 5 times 5 raised to the power 1 upon 2. This is how we simplify it. So if we move forward, this minus, you know, this half, if we move it, it's going to be 2. And this minus we are going to be minus, so this log becomes minus log 2 base 5 base 5. We say the square root of. Here again, we can say log of when we are multiplying the same numbers. The power of this is 1, this is 5. We can just take one of them. The power of this is 1. 1 plus half is 3 over 2. And base 5 to the power minus 1 plus this log again, the same thing. But here, you know, we have this one fourth. If we move it for it's going to be fourth root of two raised to the power five raised to the power three all over two. I think this is it. But you know, log five is five is one. So the end of this remains minus two, the square root of. There is a minus sign here. And this minus sign of move is going to be minus. And this three of two is going to be three over two log five base five. Plus, we take again 4 times, this is 3 upon 2, it's going to be 3 upon 2, which is log 5 base 5, I think is it. So we say minus 2, the square root of log 5 is 5 is 1, so this means 3 upon 2, plus log 5 is 5 is 5, so 2 into 4 is 2, 2 times 3 is going to be 6. So we have this value, this 6 same as upon 1. Yeah, so we say minus 2. I hope this one is clear. Square root of, if we take the LCM here is 2, 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 2 is 1, 1 times minus 3 is minus 3, plus 1 into 2 is 2 times, yeah, 1 into 2 is 2 times, 2 times, 1 into 2 is 2 times, 2 times 6 is 12, let's say 3 upon 2, Yeah, this is going to be 12. So it's 12, but there is something here which we have to take note of. And I think this number given here is root 5. I think you are saying it's root 5. Instead of we use this root 5, we use this 4 root 2. I think we have to take note of that. We use this forward to think we have to carefully change it. Not for not for root two, but root five. This is square root of five. This also is square root of five. And so I think this square root of five, I think we can write it as five root per half. And when it moves, this is five. So it's going to be two. Yeah again. So when it moves, it's going to be 2 here, and the base is going to be 5. I think we are there now. Yeah. So in this case, log 5 is 5 is 1, so minus 1 over 2 2. Plus, log 5 is 5 is 1, so 2 into 2 is 2, cancel 2, it remains 3, plus 3. 
So this will be 1. So in this case, if we complete this problem, 2 into 2 is 1 times 1 times minus 6 minus 3 plus 1 into 2 is 2 times 2 times 3 is 6. So this is it. So if we further complete this problem, we say minus 2, the square root of minus 3 plus 6 is 3 divided by 2. Yeah, I think this is it. But if you not stop it here, this can also be written as minus. You know, this 2, if we take it inside, it's going to be 4 times 3 all over 2. So this will be negative of the square root of 2 into 4 is 2 times 2 times 3 6. So the final answer for this is the negative of the square root of 6. I think this is it. So we have solved A, B, and C. So the D part, I think, due to the time, I think we have spent almost 31 minutes. So I can give you the last part to try, you see. Exercise, let's see an exercise. Simplify the, the D part, which is given as half, and bracket open, 9 raised to the power log 5, base 25 to another number which is plus 1 and also have negative 3 raised to power 2 and the power is also having log of 2 base 16 plus another number which is 1 upon 4 I think this is it. minus this bracket is covered minus log of 2 root 2 and we take the square root of 2. This is 2 root 2 of 2. How did it? So, you can try this problem, which, which reads as half bracket open 9 raised to the power log 5 base 25, and another power is given plus 1, minus 3 raised to the power 2, 3 raised to the power 2 into log 2 base 16, plus another power is given plus 1 fourth, all brackets closed minus log 2 root 2 base root 2. You can try this. So the answer for this is 9. When you try it, at the end of the day, you have an answer, a value of 9. So thank you all. Stay blessed. Continue watching my videos. Always tell your, fr your friends, colleagues to subscribe, like, and give comments. Thank you.